Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the uh, Waukegan City Council meeting for um, Monday, December 6, 2010. Roll call, please. Alderman Tempass. Present. Alderman Needham. Alderman Larson. Present. Alderman Rivera. Present. Alderman Cunningham. Present. Alderman Conkin. Present. Alderman Moisio. Present. Alderman Figueroa. Present. Alderman Newsom. Present. President accounted for, we have a quorum. I understand Pat's not feeling well tonight. Our best wishes go out to him to recover from uh, the flu or whatever he has. Could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated, please. Well, I have a few comments I'd like to make, a couple of things I'd like to read to you uh, to kind of kick off here. Um, first of all, I'd like to read something from the later, one of the later issues of American City and County. It's a magazine which I receive um, each month, and Greg, I think this will be of particular interest to you. Uh, it's headlined, Chicago Cracks Down on Chronic Crime. Um, it's no longer cool to own a crack house in Chicago. On October 6th, the City Council approved a new ordinance that would hold property owners more accountable when their buildings require more than the usual level of police and emergency service in response to chronic illegal activity. A property with chronic illegal activity is defined by the ordinance as one that experiences three or more calls for police service on three different days within any 90-day period in which the police investigate illegal activity on the premises or take enforcement action against any tenant or person associated with the premises for illegal activity occurring, with one occurring within one block or 1,000 feet of the property. The ordinance establishes penalties from $500 to $1,000 for each offense once a building has been declared a public nuisance and penalties of $200 to $500 for any other violation of the ordinance. In addition, the property owner will be liable to the city for all costs incurred as a result of responding to the calls for service. Now, we've had discussions up here and among ourselves going on for months now about looking at an ordinance such as this um, I think that uh, I will ask Corporation Council to uh, obtain a copy of the uh, ordinance from Chicago to strip out of that ordinance those uh, uh, items that uh, he feels are appropriate for the city of Waukegan and be begin to craft uh, an ordinance very much in the fashion of what I read about and uh, hopefully within the next couple of months be able to bring that to the city council for um, uh, overall vote. So I think that uh, we're kind of moving along the steps that we've been hoping to be able to target some of these properties. And, and I will say that uh, what I read focuses primarily on police activity. The city of Waukegan's ordinance will not just focus on police activity. It will also focus on code enforcement and other types of violations. And properties that are chronic uh, will be targeted as they are in Chicago. Obviously, it depends on coming out of uh, the committee. This would be going through the Judiciary Committee. And whatever they decide would be appropriate in the way of fines um, and penalties would be what we would apply. But I think it's a good start. And it's something that, um, you know, I'm glad Chicago did it because we're now able to do a lot, be able to take a lot of the work that they did and hopefully adopt it to the city of Waukegan. Now, under Mayor's comments, um, I want to thank our friends at Main Street for all of the planning and hard work that went into our holiday festival downtown on this uh, uh, prior weekend. Many of the downtown stores decorated their windows and as part of a competition overseen by Main Street, Ray's Grocery Store was selected as the best display. The prize was unusual in that the business license for 2011 for Ray's will be paid for by Main Street. Of course, we wish to thank Midwest Generation for providing the funding to make such a unique prize possible. 
I also want to thank Alderman Sam Cunningham for volunteering to join with me in reading to the young children that attended. Um, last but not least, thanks go to Dave Motley and to Tom Haggerty for all of their hard work in making sure the city provided the support necessary to make the event possible and for procuring, placing, and decorating the city's new permanent Christmas tree over at Benny Plaza. If you haven't had a chance to go see it, um, following this meeting, it might, be, uh, it might be worthwhile going over there. Uh, Tom, is it lit this evening? Yes. Good. So. You get a chance to see what it looks like. I think everybody did a real nice job. Uh, if everyone could do me a favor and check their cell phones to make sure that they are turned off to either silent or just turned off in general, um, I would appreciate it. I'm doing that to mine right now. So we make sure that the meeting is not interrupted as we progress. Uh, second, the Waukegan Library unveiled its newest year-long exhibit designed to focus on the educational and creative stimulation of our young people entitled Under the Sea. I attended the grand opening on Sunday and it was packed with families and their children eager to experience this wonderful exhibit. Thanks should go out to our friends at North Shore Gas for the sponsorship support they provided which made uh, this exhibit possible. Um, three, I want to announce that we are going to begin the process of creating a new group that will be charged with overseeing the implementation of the master plan in our downtown and lakefront areas. I am setting a six month time frame for creating the legal framework, appointing the members and providing the empowerment necessary to this group so that we can begin to see measurable strides being made towards that redevelopment project uh, in our downtown and lakefront. Many communities that have successfully tackled such complex and wide-ranging redevelopment initiatives have taken this very same approach. It will be a separate legal entity that will assess the current state of the master plan, finalize all agreements necessary with lakefront stakeholders, work to attract the capital necessary to fund the proposed developments, and then serve until the project is deemed completed. This will not be a branch of Waukegan government. Even though they are chartered by the city, they will work as a separate entity and the city will provide the required oversight and support as needed, but will by and large step aside in order to allow this body to function at maximum efficiency with a minimum of government intrusion. Those of us that were able to attend the review of the master plan several weeks ago will remember the discussion that took place at that meeting and the words that were spoken by the gentlemen there that were very clear about the fact that the city of Waukegan should have been well along in this redevelopment process. And he said that it really is about time that you, that you adopt a new approach to this. And I brought up the idea of creating a redevelopment authority, a redevelopment commission, whatever the name ends up being. And there seemed, seemed to be concurrence on that. And it does seem to be a good way to get started, which is to allow the professionals to run a project as big as this, which could approach not only tens of millions, but maybe potentially several hundred million dollars in getting our lakefront and downtown redeveloped. So it's something that uh, we will all be working together to put together, but hopefully uh, everybody will understand that it is the private sector that does this type of work best and it is in the best interest of, of this city government to be able to step aside and allow them to move this project forward. I would like to read something from the latest issue of Cranes. Uh, it just came out this week. Bear with me, it's a little bit lengthy, but I think it's important that everybody hears this. It's titled, Wanted, Skilled Labor. Subtitle, Precision Manufacturers Can't Fill Some Key Jobs. For the last 18 months, Michael Halpers, president of Swiss Precision, Precision Machining Incorporated, has struggled to find employees to operate the computer-controlled metalworking machines that dominate the company's 33,000 square foot manufacturing plant in Niles. Despite attending a slew of job fairs and working with employment agencies and industry associations, three machinist positions with salaries ranging from $12.50 to $30 an hour remain unfilled. The way the economy is now, you'd expect lines around the block, said Mr. Alpers, whose company makes high precision components for the medical, dental, and fiber optics industries. But we are not getting a tidal wave of applicants. Manufacturers like Swiss Precision are finding that despite record unemployment rates, the long-standing shortfall of skilled machinists remains. 
Industry experts point to the school system, which they say does not turn out enough people with the technical skills that manufacturers require. The schools, in their view, also do an inadequate job of promoting manufacturing as a career path. We want to grow, said Mr. Alpers. We have the ability to buy different equipment and to go into different markets, but we can't find enough people to train. There's no sense in buying the equipment if you can't get people to operate it. Reversing the decline in skilled trades workers is seen by many economists as a key to reducing unemployment and maintaining a competitive, competitive edge in a global economy. A 2008 study by the Center for Labor and Community Research, a Chicago-based nonprofit manufacturing research organization, found that 1,800 new and replaced machi machining workers are needed each year in the Chicago area. But existing training programs can meet only one-third of the demand, the report says. The problem is quite real and quite deep, says Dan Swinney, executive director of the Chicago Manufacturing Renaissance Council, a Chicago coalition formed five years ago to promote the economic viability of modern manufacturing. It will become a crisis in the next five or ten years unless there is a turnaround in our education system. Mr. Swinney says change is underway. He cites local successes like the Austin Polytechnical Academy in Chicago, a career high school dedicated to high-skilled manufacturing, which will graduate its first class in June. In addition, Wheeling High School in Wheeling and Chicago's Richard J. Daly and Wilbur Wright Colleges are leaders in manufacturing training and education. At least two schools, Austin Polytech and Daly College, are pursuing National Institute for Machining Skills accreditation. Yet, Mr. Sweeney says, these few examples are not enough to fill the manufacturing labor gap. These are demonstration projects, he says. They can only make a difference if they go to scale. We need five or six schools like Austin Polytech. They are also reaching out to schools including Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, and they want to develop partnerships with private and government-sponsored laboratories to make sure they are working and developing the skills necessary for our kind of industry. This will help position our company, or our community, I should say as well, to be on the front end of leading technology and we can be a place where graduates and technical workers can pursue internships and even full-time jobs. Now the, reading, the reason I'm reading this article is does, it does a great job of explaining why we're moving forward with the Waukegan Industrial Council. Due to a busy summer and fall, we have not been pushing the formation this, of this group as aggressively as I would have liked. This will be an advisory group that will not be a legal part of city government, but will function in strictly an advisory capacity as we try to reinvent our workforce in order to accomplish two things. First, train residents in skills that will make them more attractive to regional employers. Second, to create a workforce that is more attractive to companies seeking to locate in the region, hopefully to bring them into the city of Waukegan. I have already spoken with several local corporations about being involved and have found a real willingness among them to take part. Secondly, I have approached regional educators, College of Lake County, Robert Morris University, Roslyn Franklin University, and our own District 60 about joining, and they have all agreed to provide representatives to this effort. I am shooting for a final makeup of this group by the end of March and will provide a public announcement at that time as to the names of the participants coming from the business and educational sectors. Stay tuned for third, further developments. Thank you. Next we have audience time. First up, and I will remind uh, audience members that are wishing to speak that we do limit your comments to three minutes. First up would be Mr. Jose Guzman. Um, Mr. Guzman, I believe you're, you're showing your address is 40 Washington Park in Waukegan. That's is that correct? correct sir. Yes, Mr. Guzman. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Jose Guzman. I come here to complain about uh, raising taxes uh, property taxes. I think uh, we got a very high rate already in the property taxes and we cannot afford to pay any more taxes in Waukegan. And if the city of Waukegan, they show the money, they should make it, find a, a different way where they can make a cut. Uh, is it uh, people making too much money, city workers, uh, 
It's another thing I've been having some complaints about some people been saying they've been seeing a city cars driving in the grocery stores, jewels, different grocery stores during Sunday and Saturdays. Somebody abused that. They should never, nobody should use a city car in the weekend. When I go to work, I take, I drive my car. I pay for my gasoline. Everybody should do that. That's abuse. And that's, I don't willing to pay no more taxes in Waukegan. If they raise the taxes in Waukegan, get ready for more protests. Big ones. Boycotts. Well, we got to do what we got to do, but we cannot accept no more taxes in Waukegan. Property taxes is way too high. If they have a problem with the schools, find out those principals, those big shots over there making way too much money. 100,000, 200,000, it's too much. A lot of our people making 10,000 a year, 15,000 a year, 20,000 a year, and keeping raising the taxes. They're hurting us. We cannot keep going that way. We got to find a different solution. We got to find a better way to do things in Waukegan. We cannot pay no more property taxes in Waukegan. And it's another thing I want to say about those $500 fine they have for those people, for they take the cars away. They take the cars away and charge them $500 to $1,000. That's stealing the money from those people. Because those people don't have driver's licenses because they don't want to give it to them. That's not their fault. The federal government know they're illegal here. All the government know those people, they're good working people. Then the top of your roof, changing the roof. They work all over, they pay taxes. They never claim for the social security, they never claim for the unemployment. What else you want? You still robbing them? Taking the money away from them? No. They should go back to the old time. Anybody got caught with no driving license, all they got to do, park the car in there, let them come and pick up the car with somebody else have a driving license and prove it's insur they have insurance, let them go. Let the judge to decide it, what to do with the person. Don't go and take the money away from that person. Thank you, Mr. Guzman. Thank you. Appreciate your comments, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Margaret Carrasco. Margaret, you'll have to give your address if you're, uh, when you come up to speak, please. Margaret Carrasco, 532 North Lewis Avenue. I'm here this evening not only to speak um, for myself, but on behalf of many residents, working residents, um, and organizations, including those present today from the Chapala Group, taking upon ourselves to attend each and every meeting so we are up to date as the any developments in regards to three different items. Um, first of all, at the last meeting in regards to the proposed um, changes to the towing ordinance, several aldermen had requested additional information and um, if we're interested as to what specifically is information that is being requested that's being taken into consideration, perhaps maybe holding back a decision to be made um, in regards to any modifications, so perhaps that could be clarified. Um, besides that, um, it is of great interest um, why the seizures, my understanding at least, seizures are listed as a separate line item on the city budget rather than be listed under the police department? Are we that, are, are, are we City Waukegan dependent on seizures to such an extent that we have it listed as a separate item? Um, and um, last time, the last meeting, when there was a Chicago group, we're not stupid, we know what's going on, wanting to come into our city, acquire for a dollar a property, um, for foster children, and, th and that's fine, but you know what? Stay in Chicago, not in Waukegan. Um, I would, first of all, I was offended because why was not that opportunity be made to all Waukegan organizations, 
Why is a Chicago outsider being given this opportunity and we are not? And the second thing is that, you know, here we are, you're asking, you know, to increase our property taxes while a Chicago group to come in and they're not gonna pay property, they're gonna get all these benefits. I propose rather instead, and I'm glad to see that we came with some initiatives to open it up, possibility, but why not, if you're gonna give something away I, for a dollar, that opportunity, we have, you as veterans, a lot of disabled vets, Waukegan residents, give them that opportunity for a dollar to buy a Waukegan home. They're gonna pay property taxes. They are Waukeganites already. I would rather, personally myself, help them out than help someone who's not a Waukeganite. Thank you very much. I'll be um, on the 20th, whenever your next meeting, with an extensive list of suggestions. What can be done to balance the budget Anything but increase the property taxes as a last resort. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, next would be Mr. Chris Blanks, uh, 409 Oak Street in Waukegan. Brother Blanks, 409 Oak Street, Waukegan, Illinois. Um, Last city council meeting I was here, it was good to hear um, that they was taking some consideration around the $500 impoundment. Uh, the first time that I had ever stepped foot inside of the city council meeting was regarding and surrounding the $500 impoundment. That summons me here because of the inequitable and unfair enforcement of that ordinance. And um, so I'm, I'm here today and I'm glad it, here it's going to you know, you're taking some consideration towards it. Uh, I'd like to, if I can, just kind of uh, offer uh, some encouragement or suggestion. And I know I heard someone say that they was considering making an amendment to that particular ordinance. Um, as I have stressed, you know, to a few other people that, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to put a new tire on a warp wheel. And uh, what, I, what I mean by that is, and I'm sure that you all might find some way or feel that this particular ordinance could be savaged, uh, but I would so strongly suggest that since this is a new administration, you all do have the power to scrap and to do away with this so-called old $500 impoundment and to make it anew, to create one of your own. It, it shouldn't even have to be called the $500 impoundment considering how many people have been hurt, how many homes have been broken, uh, the amount of uh, hardship and pain it has been caused. Just the mention of a so-called or a towing ordinance, it causes people pain. I would like to strongly suggest that if anything is done, you as a new administration or as a new mayor, redo it. Do away with what we have come to know as a $500 impoundment as for where people have been hurt under this ordinance. Um, and, it's just, it's, it was, you know, it was bad from the beginning. And like I said, if there was ever a case or a situation where you would reinvent the wheel, this is definitely one. So that's just a suggestion I would like to make also. Uh, you know, I like to look at the fact that the only time, I have to look at the fact that it appear that the only time that this particular issue can make it back, and this is a genuine concern of mine. And there's no political or religious uh, motives behind it, but it appeared to me it seems to me that the only time that this particular issue can make it back to the city council floor is during the automatic election. The pain and suffering of our community's people is not to be used as some cheap pawn, as though it's a political chip and some cheap game of poker. I would like to think that whoever is taking this into consideration, that you take it into consideration in the best interest of the people and not to, one last thing I, I want to mention in closing is that uh, if there is some way under this ordinance, considering that, and I know there's a lot of litigation and legalities going around this, if there's a mayor, a former mayor and a chief who is still being legally defended for the hardship and the pain that this thing has caused the people, if there's any way that as a community, considering that this city is still under hardship uh, finances and, and uh, trying to find ways to get funding, if there's any way 
that we can find that we should no longer have to pay for the legal defense of a mayor who is no longer mayor and a chief who is no longer chief. Let's find a way to keep them doing it and put that money back here to the citizens in the community where it belongs. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank Mr. Okay. Uh, Newton Finn for coming out on our opening day for our organization. Appreciate you coming out. I will be coming back with more information on some of the initiative that we're taking with our organization. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Blanks. Uh, next up is Violet Ricker, 10 North Sheridan Road, Waukegan. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Violet Ricker. I live at 10 North Sheridan Road, and I am the director of Waukegan Main Street, our downtown development nonprofit organization. Um, I'm here tonight to keep you up to date on what Main Street has been up to, and thank you, Mayor Sabanjan, very much for recognizing Holiday Fest. We had a really wonderful time. And I do especially want to thank the Mayor and Alderman Sam Cunningham for attending and reading books at the Genesee Theater. We had a great crowd of kids there before we did the Christmas tree lighting. And I would also really like to thank Tom Haggerty and the Public Works Department. Your guys did a wonderful job um, hanging up the wreaths and putting in the Christmas decorations to help us get everything looking nice downtown. So thank you, Public Works Department. Um, the window decorating contest that the mayor mentioned, we had over 20 participants, and that was more than we've ever had before. If you have a chance to go up and down Genesee Street and County Street, it looks beautiful down there, and all the windows will be decorated for the rest of the month. We also had a 50-50 raffle, um, and our winner was Rod Swank. He won $850, with the rest of the proceeds going to Main Street. Um, and one of the other projects that we've been working on is a new downtown development logo um, for, to help people recognize all of the progress that's going on concurrently in downtown Waukegan and at the lakefront. Um, so we just selected that logo and that was created by Dr. Marco Antonio Cruz who we've been working with. He's a, a wonderful volunteer who was so kind as to donate that logo. And we look forward to recognizing him at City Council in the coming weeks and presenting that logo to you and telling you more about uh, what we're doing. And finally, I just want to thank the mayor for um, the article that you read today, I think it's really important that we all recognize the importance of public-private partnerships. And thank you for setting downtown development as a priority. We really appreciate that. So thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next month to tell you what we're up to. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, and we appreciate everything Main Street does as well. Um, OK. Next up, we'll take a motion to accept the minutes of November 15, 2010, regular meeting and executive session and November 18th, 2010, special meeting minutes and executive session minutes. Motion by Alderman Moisio, seconded by Alderman Larson. Roll call, please. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Larson. Uh, aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any resolutions or proclamations before this evening. And first up under item seven would be committee reports and motions. Uh, motions. Uh, Public Safety Committee report, Alderman Larson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Public Safety Committee met at six o'clock on November 29th. Uh, just so you know, on my committee includes uh, Alderman Mosio, Conkin, Rivera, and Figueroa. I invite you to come to the committee meetings. Uh, under, there was no old business. Under new business, uh, item A, emergency repairs to engine three under the fire department uh, category. The, uh, uh, the Waukegan Fire Department uh, needed emergency repairs to uh, engine number three. Uh, the Public Safety Committee recommends, and I so move, that the proper city officials be authorized to have inland Detroit Diesel slash Allison Complete emergency repairs to engine number three. Total cost for the rebuild, removal, reinstallation, and special synthetic transmission fluid will be between $10,500 and $11,000. And uh, the chief is looking to make sh sure that it is possible to pay that through the foreign uh, fire tax that is collected. And I so move. We have the motion by uh, Alderman Larson, seconded by Alderman Moisio. Roll call, please. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item B, under the Police Department, restricted parking, permit parking uh, at Victory Street, Philippa, Philippa Avenue, and Chapel Street between Washington Street and Clayton Street. Uh, this has to do with parking. Uh, 
more effective parking uh, control around the uh, old high school. This will be effective January 1st. The Public Safety Committee recommends, and I so move, that the proper city officials be authorized to draft an ordinance to reflect restricted parking to no parking between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. on school days, except by resident permit on the west side of Victory Street between Washington Street and Clayton Street, west side of Philippa Avenue between Washington Street and Clayton Street, and the east and west side of Chapel Street between Washington Street and Clayton Street. And I so move. We have the motion by Alderman Larson, seconded by Alderman Moisio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. <coughs> in the eighth ward, item C, a yield sign, Eastwood Road, westbound at Charleston Road. Um, there's a, a T intersection that, uh, uh, on Charleston that uh, might help control some of the speeding that goes down that uh, side street. The Public Safety Committee recommends, and I so move, that the proper city officials be authorized to draft an ordinance to reflect the placement of a one-way yield sign <coughs> for westbound Eastwood Road at Charleston Road, and I so move. We have the motion by Alderman Larson, seconded by Alderman Moisio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Item D, request for professional services and permission to begin competitive process for CIP project on the police department roof. Um, the, Waukee, the Public Safety Committee recommends, and I so move, that the proper city officials be authorized to begin the competitive uh -huh. bidding process based on the specifications that will be developed by RRP Incorporated, uh, Waukegan, Illinois, funding for the professional services provided by RRP Incorporated, 1725 North Lewis Avenue, Waukegan, Illinois, 60085, will be taken from the Capital Improvement Bond Funds General Obligation Series C, and I so move. We have the motion by Alderman Larson, seconded by Alderman Moisio. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Ayes have it, thank you. And uh, just a little information, a check was received from the Illinois State Police. The Waukegan Police Department received a forfeiture check in the amount of $13,396.26 from the Illinois State Police, and that will be going into the general fund. And that is all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Larson. Next is Judiciary Committee Report, Alderman Figueroa. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the Judiciary Committee met on uh, November the 20, 29th at 6.30 p.m., there's no old business. First item under new business was for zoning calendar 2306 for the petitioner Shilothan location, Washington Road between Lakehurst and McGraw, excuse me, that's McGraw Roads. This is in the ninth ward. There's a preliminary plat of the McGraw Road commercial subdivision. The Judiciary Committee recommends an ISO move to have the Corporation Council draft an ordinance approving the final plat of the McGall Road uh, commercial subdivision with conditions as outlined by staff. We have the motion by Alderman Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Cunningham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. B, Corporation Council to, um, this is the zoning count 2307 for the petitioner, Green Bay Crossings. Uh, the location is west terminus of the um, Apple Avenue and west of Green Bay Road. It's for a conditional use permit for a composting facility. And the people who uh, are gonna be running the facility came and made a presentation. It's um, not your regular run of the mill, it's high tech composting facility. Uh, the idea is that with this composting facility, none of the normal fumes uh, that are related to composting facilities will be uh, emanating. 
So the Judiciary Committee recommends and I so move to have the Corporation Council draft an ordinance approving the composting facility at the west terminus of Apple Avenue, west of Green Bay Road. We have the motion by Alderman Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Cunningham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Next item, and that's uh, related also to the same project, zoning calendar 2307. This is for the request of a map amendment from B2, general commercial to I2, general industrial. Same project. The Judiciary Committee recommends and I so move to have the Corporation Council draft an ordinance uh, approving the map amendment from B3 General Con Commercial to I2 General Industrial. We have the motion by Alderman Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Cunningham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Next item on the agenda has to do with the uh, amendment to City Code Section 1130 Vehicle Repairs. It is uh, the petitioner, of course, is the City of Waukegan. It's amendment to the City Code changing the hours of operation for vehicle repair uh, establishments. The Judiciary Committee recommends, and I so move, to approve as presented the ordinance amending the City Code Section 1130, changing the hours of operation for vehicle repair establishments. And the, the hours are from 6, wait a minute, actually it's from 7 p.m. on the day, uh, on that day, until 6 a.m. the following day. In other words, we have no operations of vehicle repairs overnight. Is that the problem that it's seven, yeah. Yes, it's Alderman Moisey. Here it says 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. in the ordinance. It says 8 p.m. I'm sorry. So well, I'm just which is correct. I'm making it's sure. it's the ordinance. The actual ordinance. The ordinance say is 8 correct. PM. Yeah. The ordinance is the correct. Ordinance is the correct. Is wrong. Okay. Seven. Okay. Okay. All right. So thanks, the, thanks the ordinance. The, the motion should read to uh, the motion would be to approve an ordinance amending the Waukegan Code of Ordinances, Chapter 11, regarding vehicle repairs to limit the hours of operation from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. in the actually, evening. Actually, it's from 8 p.m. until 6. A.M. Yes. That's overnight to av avoid overnight. overnight. You can't do it during they're just during the day. To those day times. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Same difference. I think the semantics are probably we get the point. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> right. It's it's right on the ordinance. It's right on the ordinance. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Alderman Conkin. You know, this, the whole purpose is to avoid overnight. Uh, exactly. Late night and overnight. Sure. Alderman Conkin. I understand that the purpose is to avoid overnight working on vehicles and late working on vehicles in residential areas. But uh, do we have any businesses? that are actually located, I'm talking about something like on Belvedere Road that might be a garage that's located within 50 feet of residential district, but they're actually a business. Would so they be required to shut down 8 o'clock at night? Yeah. I'm assuming yeah. they're within the 50 feet. I have one on Washington. That doesn't, they don't do much, but they do do some work. And I've gotten calls they're concerned about this right. because they say they do a good deal of business there normally, but they're in a business district. They're on a major street. Sure. And I don't really see that as a big interference with the residential as opposed to somebody in the it's middle of a neighborhood working on his car at 2 in the morning. It's, it's uh, based on a residential district. If they're within 50 feet of a residential. Zone, right. If they're in a business zone, they should not affect them. Okay. I well, it depends on the proximity to the residential yeah. district, though. The intent is clear. I was worried about somebody yeah, like within that, 50 feet. The but yeah, but from the enforcement standpoint, that would be an enforcement. You know, we, we need to, uh, and I, it's unfortunate Russ is not here tonight, but uh, as we said before, it's, uh, this mainly affects a lot of those, uh, not just on, on Bell, but deep inside residential neighborhoods. Right. I mean, a house on one side <laughs> and a house on the other side and a house in the back. Right. But I, I do understand what you're saying uh, too, Alderman. But uh, I, I think we, if we talk with Russ, and that's will be the zoning department will, will, will be enforcing this, this ordinance, we have a better understanding as to how and where it's going to be, how it's supposed to be enforced. 
Okay. 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 Alderman Conkin, are you satisfied? Yes, sir. With that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the actual uh, do we have any other questions? Yes, Alderman Rivera. You know, yeah, it's fine, but you know. Could you still, speak into the mic, please? It still has to be black and white. You know, I mean, our code department, they need to know. You know, they just can't, you know, assume before they give any fines, are we doing this right? They need to know exactly what we're looking for. <clears throat> so it, it, it has to be in black and white in order for us to enforce and to get in, into any other problems that may occur in the future. So it has to be black and white. Well, might I suggest, given the amount of questions here. Uh, Your Honor, it is in black and white. All right, would you like to read the yeah, actual read ordinance, it. Alderman, so we can get it into the record? Repairs, and uh, I'm sure that all of the Aldermen got copies of this, where it says, in locations within 50 feet of a residential district, it shall be unlawful for any person to repair, service, or test any, any motor vehicle between the hours of 6 p.m. of one day to 6 a.m. the following day. In other words, to avoid overnight uh, repairs. The, the provision supplies, or excuse me, the, the provision, I mean, the provision applies to repair garages, <coughs> whether permitted or operating under a conditional use permit, as well as individuals working on their own vehicles again, within 50 feet of residential. This came about because we have a lot of neighborhood automobile repairs in there. They come in there and they repair cars and, and sometimes a party breaks out and they're there till two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, especially during the summer. And we've had a lot of complaints from residential area. So this is in, in locations within 50 feet, whether you're a resident repairing your car. Now, if you close the garage, and you're working on it, I, I don't think that anybody's gonna come and knock on your door. We just wanna avoid the noise. This came about as part of the ord noise. We wanted to get this uh, done ahead of time. All right, let, let me just right. confirm again, just so I'm gonna read this into the record one more time. One more question. Go ahead, Alderman. Well, my question then is, for an example, a San Jose repair shop on uh, Washington Park in Belvedere. Their property backs up to a residential area. So are we saying that as long as they're fixing cars 50 feet away from that residential area, they can be open later? Yes. Like say eight or nine or 10 o'clock? Okay, that's fine. I'm good with it then. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, thank you. One more time, just so it gets read correctly, the hours, I want to make sure the hours are understood that this is a preclusionary ordinance that says you cannot do something during a established time frame. That time frame precludes that type of work from 8 p.m. in the evening until 6 a.m. the following morning. Yes, correct. That's what we are voting on. I just wanted to make sure that that was read, read into the record as correctly as was possible. So we have the motion by Alderman Figueroa, second by Alderman Moisio. Roll call, please. Alderman Tempass. I'm gonna vote aye, but explain my vote. I think the noise ordinance would take care of this. I don't think we need another ordinance, but I understand what you're trying to do. I vote aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye, and uh, just to respond to what Alderman Tempest has said, we've got other changes coming to the uh, noise ordinance. And I think that uh, there's been a large clamor, especially this last uh, several months from, from residents asking for changes. We wanted to get this done right away. Okay. Alderman Newsom. Aye. The ayes have it, thank you. Alderman Figueroa, does that conclude your business? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Unfortunately, the, um, uh, we can't uh, act on this, but also in the uh, Judiciary Committee, we had an amendment to the daycare homes ordinance that doesn't appear on the uh, agenda. Uh, agenda. And it's, it's a simple change and it's talking about allowing notifications via uh, normal mail versus not, uh, certified mail, just to reduce the cost. But uh, hopefully we can get that on the next uh, agenda two weeks from tonight. Certainly, we, we can, can have that on, on the for the 20th. Uh, I don't think that uh, loss of that much time will uh, 
heard anything. So thank you all. And then that's it. That does conclude. Uh, okay. And I and I do want to announce too that um, this evening we do have an executive session that we we will be going into. We normally do that following the alderman's comments. And um, once we come out of executive session, we will close the meeting. So once we go into executive session, for all intents and purposes, that will be the end of the of the meeting. Now we move to labor relations committee item A. I present this as the chair of labor relations committee and um, who is here to speak to this this evening who would we uh, the chief is okay chief we'll probably ask on you to come forward and I'll read it why don't you come forward because I'm sure there'll be questions but the labor relations committee met and um, we uh, our uh, task was to approve an amendment to an agreement between the city of Waukegan and the International Association of Firefighters local 473 for the purpose of adding the rank of captains. And I'll take, uh, I will make the motion and second it by Alderman Rivera. And I think, Chief, I'd just like you to give uh, the Alderman and the audience an overview of what this is all about and, and explain how this is going to work. Please. Approximately a year ago, we uh, started negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters as the captains asked to join the union. Uh, we have at this time four captains on the fire department, so this affects those four captains. Uh, in addition, their bargaining unit is one bargaining unit, which includes lieutenants and firefighters. Uh, during this negotiations, uh, numerous portions of the contract which uh, apply to the lieutenants and to uh, the firefighters. We had captains added into the contract in the language. Uh, it, it had to do with uh, the increments in which captains could pick their, their vacation, uh, their health insurance. Uh, it also included the, the waiver of their uh, clothing allowance for this uh, year. So they gave that back. Uh, we established the, uh, their insurance and also anything in regards to grievance procedures and uh, transfer duty trades and job duties. Uh, it also included uh, performance evaluations for captains as well as uh, whether or not a captain would have to maintain their paramedic service. Uh, at which time all four captains are paramedics. It also had a uh, change to their salary. We had to update the salary ordinance. Uh, their salary was increased uh, to 3% over the top lieutenant and uh, there are five steps that are included here, including a step that uh, over 20 years uh, they would get an added uh, $900. And this uh, was not retroactive. They have not had a pay raise since uh, uh, fiscal 0809. And uh, there is a 4% increase over what they made back then. Uh, again, there's a 3% difference between the top paid lieutenant and uh, the bottom paid captain. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions? Alderman Tempest. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, you gave me the bottom line. Uh, what's the top lieutenant and the top captain? What's the difference in the salary? Dollar wise. I can't, wise, I can't speak to the top lieutenant at this time unless I go through the, the contract. Uh, yeah. But uh, this, there's five steps for captain, there's seven steps for lieutenant, and uh, <laughs> between the top lieutenant and uh, the bottom. <coughs> Captain, there's three percent. I didn't quite get an answer, but that's okay. I'll get it later. Uh, the rank of captain. Yes. We now have a rank where you choose who you want as your different. You got shift A, B, and C. You got your commanders. Are you? Wait, what's the rank? What's the official name you give? There are battalion chiefs. Battalion chiefs. Thank you. Uh, why do we need the rank of captain? Captains used to, way back when, captains were in charge of the shifts. Now we have the rank of battalion chief. Why do we need the rank of captain anymore? The battalion chiefs are the head of the, the, uh, the ship. The captains 
and there are only one on each ship. There's one captain on each ship, and it, due to <coughs> financial and to the benefits to allow your battalion chiefs to have a day off, you have to have somebody take and replace them. And you have to remember that we are replacing our management person with, with a uh, bargaining unit member once this is uh, for that particular day. So there is, there is need to either change the captains to battalion chiefs, uh, Alderman, or... Uh, no, there's... Uh, or... No, I disagree. Well, go ahead. You have to have, uh, contractually, you have to have, or not contractually, but for benefit purposes, uh, you can't work your battalion chief every day. I wish I could, but uh, you can't. We have you have to give them days off and vacation time and... In, this, in these days of economic crisis, we have an assistant chief. Could he fill in at times to be a battalion chief? We have been filling in, okay, uh, I, Alderman, because we have. are on, uh, uh, not, not only are our battalion chiefs on furlough, which actually puts them less than the captain once, uh, once uh, the, the contractual situation is uh, dealt with here, but uh, the, uh, the, the battalion chiefs fill in for each other as far as the ones that are on days. We actually fill in during their furlough time. Your chief takes and rides as a well, commander to fill in for your uh, battalion well, chief. I knew that. that's why I asked you. I didn't think you would volunteer that. Uh, but is there, do we have to have a captain be an, an assistant because you got your commander here, now you got the captain underneath. What duties does, does he fulfill when he's there when he's going to fill in when the com Your captain would be filling in in regards to uh, command at a fire. Okay. And your captain would be taking care of the day-to-day -day duties to run the five stations as far as each station has a commander, a lieutenant, and, uh, uh, and then the battalion chiefs are in charge of the whole ship, all five stations. And okay, that captain fills in upon occasion for, for that battalion chief. Okay. Well, I still look for more ways to cut. I'm a little disappointed in that the captains who always management uh, felt it necessary to be, be, become a union. Uh, are, what kind of benefits on health insurance? Are they now paying 10% like the rest of union people? They, they are paying the same as uh, what they were paying previously, which is 10%, same okay. as the lieutenants. Okay. Okay. I just think that's important. And what do... Uh, I know management pays 10%. What percent does the union members pay? Well, the union is split. The lieutenants and the, the captains pay 10% and the firefighters pay 20%. Oh, so we have a disparity there, but they're in the same union. That is correct. And the firefighters pay what again? 20%. But the higher paid guys pay less? 10%. 10%. That's interesting. What a great union they have. Uh, Okay, I, I have I have problems uh, as far as the captains going into the union. I always felt they should be management. If they're going to direct people, they should be on the management side. Uh, I guess this does this did this come down from a negotiations or from an arbitrator? It it this came from negotiations as far as the the captains into the uh, the contract. The contract was negotiated uh, between the union and. The, the city, but an arbitrator did not rule on this other than the captains applied to join the union. When are you going to join the union? <laughs> you know, that's what it's coming to, really. Um, do we have any management rights as far as in the future as a city faces serious economic problems? And you belong to a club. It's a fireman's club. We've got the policeman's club. We've got the, the teacher's club. You know, we're all clubs. But is there any way that in the future that we have written the contract that uh, we may have to reduce numbers? There is a management rights clause okay. in the contract. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chief, very much. I appreciate you're welcome. It. I appreciate the job you're doing, too. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, I, 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 have uh, yes, all I have a few questions of my own. Uh, now, Chief, uh, if, uh, if you could back up, I, I thought you said that 
there was a an agreed upon uh, increase of four percent. There was an increase of four percent from what they were making in 2008 nine. So they've went two years. There's a four percent, but the still the the actual uh, difference is three percent between the lieutenant's top and the captain's right now. And there is no retroactivity, so this would go back to November 1st as far as the raise. So they did not receive any raise since fiscal year 2008-9. I know, it, 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 well then, it, so let me get this right. There was not a single rate increase for captains or a single rate increase for management. I know management as a whole, I think the city of Waukegan did not receive a rate increase. That is correct, Alderman. Uh, since 08, 09, management has not received any, any uh, rate increases and captains were included in 08, 09 and, uh, and 9, 10 yeah, in the salary ordinance with no raise. Okay, but they received the other benefits as other firefighters they received whatever benefits right. that uh, so they did receive the they received part of whatever the regular firefighters get they just didn't get that 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 bump that two percent that three percent whatever it may or have whatever been. whatever that was yeah. okay and i want to go back to all the ten pass um typically under supervision if you become a supervisor you're asking to step into the management ranks. That's typically how management works. When you say, I want to become uh, a supervisor from a supervisor, and in, your, in this particular position is a supervisor, lieutenant, captain, chief, et cetera, you're expecting it to go into that, that ladder of success. With us agreeing, this is not something that they said they want to arbitrate into. We agree to these terms, correct? No, they actually f they filed. They, but fi they filed, and then it was negotiated. Is that yeah, uh, correct? So we agreed to. They negotiated. We, we negotiated. So now there's an agreement between the city and the captains, and it says, okay, it's okay for you to join the union. That's what you're telling us, correct? Right, Tina? There's state law and there's federal law. Here we go. State law. They filed with the Illinois Board Labor Board right. for the ability to file with a union. Oh, and they, they, can, they can do that, just so we're clear. They can do that. They can do that. The state board concurred that they could. We could have gone to arbitration, or we could have gone before the labor board and disputed it, and that would have cost anywhere between sixty dollars to $100,000 in legal fees. So okay. we opted to negotiate instead. We did engage a federal mediator for part of the negotiations, which is at no cost to the city. Um, so we did opt to negotiate this process versus fight this process at the labor board. And there had been um, established in other municipalities that are similarly situated where municipalities lost at the labor board and fire captains were awarded to go into the contract. So we kind of looked at the scale of money and opted to negotiate. Um, but your questions are valid ones and they're ones that municipalities are struggling with throughout the state. And it's really the leanings of the state at this point, um, which is pro-labor. Okay, uh, now let's get back. So now we don't even have, right now, we have, I'm gonna get back to Larry Tempest's point. There's technically no management. They're all a part of the same organization. Uh, I know no. you're saying no it isn't, but you have now you have now, your management personnel is a part of the same union that is supposed to govern their subordinates. Their rank is. The, oh. the battalion chiefs is the, the staff that's your management. The battalion chiefs, your deputy chief, your, your chief are no, the, the no. management staff. No, well, I, and, and, and I agree with you on that. However, for those who don't know, the captain runs the shift, typically, the personnel on the shift. If there's a fire, 
on that ship, the captain is in control where the battalion chief is, is watching the whole, you know, operations of it. Am I right? The battalion chief is in charge of the operations. Of that, the shift. Of the, the entire ship. Right. And they're also in charge of the entire 15 persons, 17 persons, how many there are at that particular scene. That captain is in charge of two people. They may be in charge of five people. But uh, they're in charge of their crew, too. The only time that the captain is actually in charge of the entire scene would be where the battalion chief would leave and go to another fire and they would turn it over to that captain or yeah. if the captain is filling in for the battalion chief. And my, and my point exactly. The battalion chiefs will, will operate the entire shift for that particular day. Then your captain should be in charge of either a particular scene or situation. I tell you what, Your, your Honor, I have a lot of questions a lot of reservations about this. I want to hold this matter over so I can get some of these answers, uh, some of the questions answered with the person by the chief, or by Tina, or by yourself. That's where I'm at right now. Okay. Well, given the, this uh, body's uh, interpretation of uh, Robert's Rules of Orders, does not require a second for that holdover, so I will, uh, I will, we will honor it. And, um, you know, obviously, Sam, um, all I can say, and this goes to everybody sitting at this dais that's a, uh, an alderman, um, we acted on this several weeks ago. This is, has been around and before us for a while. So I would ask you that between now and the 20th, that you make sure that you find the time to meet with the appropriate, uh, whether Your it's- Your Honor, in, in all due respect, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Really? This yes, sir. Okay. It's the first time I'm hearing about it. Okay. Absolutely. Nothing. There's nothing here. Okay. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. Now we got to vote on a 4% increase. A 4% increase. I understand they didn't have it then, but understands what one person does, another's going to do. So you better get ready for every management from this is senior level management. We ain't talking about front line. Senior level management about to go into the union. And this is the first time we're hearing about it. So I think I, I, I think I, I don't know if I'm speaking for all. Well, I know then I'm absolutely, for me. It, you have a chance to talk to yes. uh, Tina, to the chief, to Barry in HR, and get all your an uh, questions answered. But please make sure that you do that, and so that now the next time we have this before us on the 20th, we will be prepared to act on it. And, and uh, chief, please have your captains available, because I want to ask. I got like to go to the front line people and ask and see was really what what the down and dirty is at. Because there, there's not the down and dirty here. Where is, I'm with Larry Tempest now, where is the contract? Who has the contract? All that was part of the Labor Yeah. I missed that. Maybe. All right. Thank you, that. Tina. Thank you very much. That's why I have to Tina, could you repeat your answer one more time, please? It was part of the Labor Relations Cabinet that's distributed, to, but we can we'll redistribute all the information. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right, you set. You all right? I'm fine. Okay, good. Let's. Uh, then that is being held over. Do we, we have any old business before us today? I don't believe we do. Uh, any communications? No communications. Then under new business item 10, new business slash recommended actions by Corporation Council. Item A is to approve the payroll dated November 17, 2010, in the amount of one million three hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred seventy-eight dollars and fifty-one cents and December 1st, 2010, in the amount of $1,422,325.88. Motion by Alderman Tempest, seconded by Alderman Moisio. Roll call, please. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Item B, approved bills dated December 6, 2010, in the amount of $1,085,311.34. Motion by Alderman Tempest, seconded by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Item C, we have the request for a raffle sale by the Waukegan High School Athletic Booster Club for the months of December 2010, <coughs> January, February, March, and April of 2011. Motion by Alderman 
Moisio, seconded by Alderman Larson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Item D, approval of intergovernmental purchase and sale agreement between the City of Waukegan and the Board of Trustee, uh, excuse me, and the Board of Trustees of Community College District Number 532 involving the former New Sun site northwest corner of Sheridan Road and Madison Street. Take a motion by Alderman Moisio, seconded by Alderman Rivera. Roll call, please. I'd like to speak to oh, yes, Alderman Tempest. Please. I sat, I came an hour early to read through this intergovernment agreement. It says in the beginning here, uh, the college is going to try and get $47,900,000 from the, from the state to construct this new building. And it might take over two years to get that. On page two of the contract, it talks with the parties further agree to explore possibilities to partner with Seller Greentown Waukegan Regreening Program. I have no problem with that as long as it isn't a mandatory part of the contract. Then on page uh, five, on page four, item H, from the date here on until the closing date, sellers shall exercise reasonable efforts to maintain and operate the property in a good and business-like manner in accordance with good and prudent business practice, ordinary wear and tear uh, casualties accepted. Well, this is a rundown building anyway. I don't know if we need that in there. And then I went and talked about on page five about the asbestos. I believe we've had that removed basically to remove it. But, but the real big problem that I have with it is when we come over to page nine, it talks about agreement regarding deconstruction demolition of existing structure at the property. It says here, the college construction service faculty and expect to provide associate employment and job training for to come into the building and, and start to demolish it somewhat. Well, that's, that's uh, nickel and dime stuff in my mind. You're not gonna be able to start knocking that building apart with, with big cranes and so forth. And then they say, however, uh, we're, it's up to us. The seller will complete all remaining demolition activities at no expense to the College of Lake County. At no expense. But they're going to the state to get a, a big bond issue for $47, $48 million, but they want the city to continue to knock it down with some bond money that we have sitting there according to, and if we don't use it for that, we will lose it. Well, if we don't use it for that, we don't have to pay it, do we? That's that's four hundred thousand dollars, I believe. Is, is that about right? If I may ask, Noel, or is, or is that eight hundred thousand? Four hundred. The last estimate that we had, the demolition was roughly four hundred thousand. Okay, and how long ago is that estimate? It's, a, it's over a year old. A year. Okay, about four hundred thousand. So, I'm I'm guessing about four hundred thousand dollars from the city of Waukegan to knock this building down. Of course, we're going to get the value of the construction and that so forth. That's $400,000. Why can't the College of Lake County take this? We give them the land for a dollar. Hey, we're done with it. We're done with it. No more ifs or not. You want to use the land, bless you. We're for you. We're for you. But you have the big deep pockets. You have the entire Lake County to tax and get your money from. We have little Waukegan. Economically distressed is why you want to put the college here anyway. Accept the whole responsibility. Don't leave us hanging there. So uh, that's my problem with, with this contract. Uh, and I really think it needs to be taken out and, and those words taken out of the contract and say that Lake County will be, after sale, one dollar, we'll, it's theirs, period. We'd have nothing more to do with it. Go ahead and build your college. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, time you did a little more for Waukegan. Uh, that's my problem with this, Mayor. And then so the bond, well, you know, about eight years ago, we we're $40 million in debt. We're now over $100 million in debt. I am concerned about our continued bond indebtedness. I'm deeply concerned. I've been concerned. So that's my comments in regards to this, Mayor. And 
And Thank you, I Alderman. I think the council should hold this over and renegotiate. Well, if you might, before you make that request, uh, one thing we'd like, uh, Corporation Council would like to review or actually explain part of the language in here. And I will also say that um, from the very beginning when the, we did uh, the last bond issuance, the City of Waukegan incorporated into that bond issuance the destruction or demolition of that building. That was always our intention to do so. And that was very clear and upfront when that bond issuance was brought forward. So at this point, um, you know, basically if we hand it over to them for a dollar, the problem with that is that there's no out clause if the project doesn't move forward. We've built that into this agreement. So that if they, they do not get the money, we are able to, uh, we're able to reacquire the site. It's very easy, Mayor, to put in the same clause. Uh, we'll sell this to you dollar and in two years you haven't done anything, it goes back to us. Very simple. Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 is, it is in there. As far as the bond issue goes, uh, you know, we were thinking about developing that and putting it on the tax rolls as far as condos overlooking the lake. And I think that was in many people's mind when that was in the bond issue, if you could get that, get stuff back on the tax rolls, it would really help our community. This is not going to put anything on the tax rolls. It's not there now because we own it. But that's my problem, Your Honor. I, I don't think this is a, the greatest agreement we could get. I think if they want the property, they should be willing to take it for a dollar. And, and if you don't do it in two years, it comes back to us. That's simple. Well, Alderman, part of this is that uh, if we, if let's let's go back to the Beitler project for a moment, which was the original project uh, envisioned for that site. Um, that was never a free project. The city was going to provide all all manner of incentives for that. And those incentives would have added up to the point of gaining back the tax revenue from that wouldn't have happened overnight. It would have taken quite a while to have gotten that return, as it does with most incentives. Um, and with Beitler, really, uh, the last meeting we had with them is that there's no market for a project there. Uh, there's no market for uh, condos, uh, it, not only just Waukegan, but everywhere. You, you look all up and down the North Shore, Chicago, not only are there no projects going, but you even look in Chicago where projects have been draped that were skeletonized and then that was it as, as far as they got. We feel that this is a great opportunity for Waukegan to bring a educational facility growth into our downtown, to bring young people into the downtown, to bring professors full-time courses. This is not the same sort of setup as Lakeshore Campus. Now. It's not, is it perfect? Um, we think it's the best, best agreement that both bodies of government could reach. Uh, one of the things that we find uh, attractive is, well, it's related to the demolition part of it. They will bring Waukegan residents in and train them how to disassemble a building. There is a process called LEED, L-E-E-D. Under this process, you create what are known as green buildings. And in creating those green buildings, certain percentage of the material going in or of the existing site has to be recycled. So part of the project is to train Waukegan residents how to do that. That's a skill that will not just be useful in this project, but further down the line as other projects come online that could even include art space. Because a lot of that building will have to be recycled as it's rebuilt and other existing, use, existing building projects. It's an opportunity we don't want to turn our back on. We don't want to be perceived as sticking our finger in the eye of the College of Lake County because of the fact that maybe the agreement isn't wholly geared towards all, of, all on Waukegan's side. There had to be some give and take here. And we believe that this is something that will help to kickstart our downtown development by bringing people down there. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take several years to get the project going. But they have a time frame. They need to respond to certain requirements from the state of Illinois, and we are trying to help them to make that time frame. Our holding this over will then force them to meet their next meeting. So they will not be able to act on this at the next meeting, and it could delay it depending how long this ends up being delayed. They may miss their deadlines. And I really do not want to put this project at risk. Now, come to a couple of things that you spoke to, I'd like to have Corporation Council uh, to respond to in a, little bit more, in, in a little bit more specificity. So, please. Yes, uh, and Alderman, I appreciate your questions. Uh, they're, they're good ones and need to be answered. Um, the original proposal was that we would sell it to the College of Lake County for a dollar. And then it would be their land 
and uh, they'd go ahead and demolish do everything else. Uh, problem with that, in my opinion, in the Corporation Council's office and uh, as far as city staff is concerned, was that we were going to give uh, a very valuable piece of land overlooking our lakefront to somebody for a buck. And maybe they'd get the funding to build the campus, and maybe they wouldn't. Uh, that did not seem to be in the interest of the taxpayers of this city or the city uh, government. The uh, language that you referred to on page nine is precisely the exact language in the memorandum of understanding already approved by this council. You'll find that language on page two of that, that, of that memo of understanding, right. which has already been approved, I believe unanimously, by this council. The idea is that College of Lake County um, would like very much to begin uh, a program of deconstruction. Um, they would like to train Waukegan residents as well as some of their own students in this specialty, which is a lucrative one and one that in terms of the green technology would lead to jobs. They would, uh, oh, and really in a rather amazing way, they, if this project collapses and we have had to go ahead and demolish it with bond money, they have agreed to reimburse us for half even though their campus project fails. I find that extraordinary on the part of the college. I don't know how any college official. Where, where is that? What page right is here. That? It's right it's in there where you stop, Larry. Excuse me? For all, all reasonable demolition site clearance expenses. Page nine. Page if we have to, if we have to knock it down, seller may then provide 60 days notice of purchaser of an attempt to demolish the building. That means that they can't, they can't get their deconstruction going in time to, to do it the way they'd like to. Um, in that event, the purchaser, at the college, agrees to reimburse seller, <coughs> says, for half of all reasonable demolition and site clearance expenses. Uh, subject to further agreement by the parties, which would allow them to do it in kind, uh, through, to pay us back to through in kind deconstruction in other city buildings that we would decide we wanted to be deconstructed uh, for our own purposes. Uh, I don't think we can get a better agreement out of uh, a public body than this one in terms of them risking with us, if you will, uh, to, to, to bring to our city a full-blown, basically $50 million, state-of-the-art, leads qualified, building that will have full-time CLC departments, full-time students, full-time faculty. Uh, this is- I hear what you're saying. It, it, it's, you know. I hear what you're yep. saying. 50 million, 47.9. They want $400,000 rest of $400,000 is going to stop them from this project? $400,000? Come on, Newt. Uh, this, this is wrong. They want give it probably for a dollar. The idea they're going to knock it down, they're going to start in two years, and if they don't get it going, really, really give them an incentive. You get going or we get the property back and it's knocked down. Do, do you Why would I give them $400,000 when they are the total Lake County and they're getting state money? Why are we going to put it in the Taxpayers back. Why? Older We're at a crisis right now as far as I'm concerned. And what you're saying, I agree. Absolutely. Waukegan needs that kind of a college here. Absolutely. But I'm saying if they're going to go for a grant for 47.9, why don't they go for 47.85, you know? Uh, uh, what's the difference when you're talking that kind of money? For us, it's a lot of money. Well, the building must come down um, one way or the other. Uh, the building has to come down. Okay. They, and they, the, the, the college market yeah. will eventually turn around, well. and eventually that land, you just told me how valuable it is, eventually that land will be valuable. It don't have to come down now. We still have the Waukegan building been sitting there for 40 years that hasn't come down. Uh, and finally, it may be developed someday. But that's valuable land overlooking the lake, as you told me, and I believe that very much so. But, and I'm willing to go along with the College of Lake County taking it over but not at our expense for demolition. If, if they want to 
demolish it and say in two years we'll get it started, fine. If you don't get it done, it goes back to us. That's a great but, deal. But you're asking that you're asking the college then to agree to if the if the project doesn't go through to convey it back to us for a buck, which they're agreeing to do. We're going to end up with that property back if this funding is not secured and the college isn't built. And yet we're asking at the same time to go ahead and, and spend $400,000 on a demolition and then hand us back a, 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 a lot for a buck that they've spent close to half a million dollars already on. No college in this country would entertain such a proposition. They're going for 48, 48 million. What are you talking about? Well, Mayor, Alderman, Mayor, I think. Allow, like Mayor, half a million. Okay. Will you allow someone else? Alderman to Larson, please. Thank you. Yes. I think it's fair to say that Alderman Tempest's logic is flawed in his analysis of this situation. We have a building that's there, okay? We're trying to work with an entity that plans to do something with the site. If for whatever reason that building doesn't get developed, it's still there. We've lost nothing. We haven't spent anything. They may have worked on the inside hiring young folks who may want to learn a building trade to start demolishing the inside, which will make the eventual demolition cost less, less costly by mm. any measure of logic, okay? But if it doesn't go forward, we still have a building. It can sit there for 40 more years until a builder comes in and, you know, we decide to do something else with the site. This is an opportunity to help redevelop our downtown and lakefront, bring folks into downtown to help rebuild our commercial and, and retail uh, community down here, bring people into town. They may want to buy housing because they have full-time staff position at the college that will be. This is a win-win situation for Waukegan. It's supported by every, every business and community group that's looked at this project from start to finish. This is a good opportunity. The College of Lake County, I believe, is an ethical and, and uh, wonderful partner to move forward with this project. They've been striving for years to do exactly this. We should welcome it with open arms. I'm asking Alderman Tempest to, to vote no if he wants to, but not hold this over. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Chairman, Larson. Will, yes, Alderman Moisio, please. Make my views. No. Alderman Moisio. If you look at the top places to live in the United You're States. In, uh, no. Alderman Tempest, please, while Alderman Moisio has the floor. If you look at the top places to live in the United States, they have one thing in common. One thing. They have an educational institution in their community, small or big. They have it. Higher educational institutions bring money in different ways. They bring people that spend money. I know what some people will say, it's just the College of Lake County, but it's still a higher educational institution that one educates people, has educated people working there, have people that will spend money, hopefully, in ancillary ways. This is a win-win, in, in my opinion, situation. I understand all of Tempest's concern about the $400,000 and putting it on the taxpayers' uh, backs. But we have got to do something. We've got to move forward as soon as we can. We've been waiting around for 50 years to get our asses moving. We've got to move on something and move quickly. I understand his concern about the demolition, but in my opinion, I agree with this. This is the best we're going to get. Let's get moving on this so that we can get something built down there that brings people down there. We all know that the goal one of the goals of the master plan was to bring people to the downtown, however it may be, whether it was the Genesee Theater, whether it was residents, hmm. however, but you got to get foot traffic down there sometime. And if we don't get moving on this, we'll never have any foot traffic. We'll be talking about this 20 years from now about how we didn't move on it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Cunningham. Uh, Your Honor, uh, and maybe it wasn't clear, but it, it just so I'm clear on this, uh, we're going to demolish that particular site first, and then um, CLC would then move on to their their design plan. Is that? I think that's that might be where the confusion is coming in. How, well, how does that go? That the go process to is to, first of all, to bring in 
people who they can develop job skills as far as deconstruction of the interior of the building. Okay. Then following that to move towards demolition. The building has to come down anyway. It is one of the biggest code violations within the city of Waukegan right now. Well. And we are, as a community, we have no moral high ground if we do not take care of our own property, but we demand that others do the same thing. And, and, and I agree that. Now, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, one of the original talks about demolishing that building, one of the, the deal, uh, I think one of the, the options that the steel and all that inside of the building would generate X amount of dollars, which, which would reduce our cost. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I guess uh, maybe to Alderman Tempest's point is, from the deconstruction and the stuff they get from that, any salvageable, anything that's salvageable, that will revert back to us that we can use as part of that $400,000 demolition. Is that, is that the way this process is going to work? If so, then I think it goes into the spirit of what we all intended from, from the very beginning with the demolition of this. Right. That was the, that's the understanding I had, and maybe that's probably what's going on here. It's just not in, in uh, as we call, ABC order. Is, 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 is it safe to say that? I, yes, because the majority of the demolition, the, the, hard, the hard core part of it, the heaviest part of the lifting of it, will come from the city, and we will have that ability to recycle. Yeah, well, and Alderman, some of it will have to be reincorporated into the new structure in order to, to, to get the LEEDS certification that everybody's looking for for this building. So okay. some, some of that stuff is going to be reincorporated into the new campus that's built. Yeah, I'm being wrinkled, but whatever it is salvageable, we can take that to whatever the, how they do it now, those dollars will come back to the city and we can use, uh, that, was the that was part of the original in intent for the demolition, if I'm not right. mistaken. That was yeah. why it was so easy for us to say, yes, we'll take the building because of the, the cost of demolishing and some of the money that we'll get from demolishing the building, we'll go back in there. And with that being said, I think we can, it's, 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 a, it's a little bit easier to digest and to you know, tell to residents of the city of Waukegan, yeah, this is why we're, we're not only moving forward with Greg's point, also trying to save dollars with Alderman Tempest's point. So sure. I'm just hoping we're still in that, in that spirit. Yes. Okay. Yes, and part of, part of it is that, uh, as I said, this building has got to come down. Oh, and, and it, I, is, I, I, it is a yeah. major, yeah. major. Uh, we, uh, we all know that. That's it is dangerous. And we have, uh, we have the homeless uh, breaking into it. There are other things that have been going on there that are, we just do not want in our downtown. And we felt that's why we put it in the CIP through the bond was to get this building down. And now we've got this other option as far as cutting our cost of bringing it down. But I keep going back to this, to this idea of the fact that Waukegan people will learn job skills during this process. And now we have forgotten this other part of it. There will be several hundred construction jobs created by this project far sooner than the Beitler project ever would have brought online. But we your Honor, I think it goes without saying, this will be a major, major step in the right direction of developing our lakefront and downtown area, period. So I think it's, it's, it's it, I don't think it's needed, it's, we don't have to sell the point exactly what it is, we just, it's just some small minor things we need to clear up, and I think I, at least I have gotten that cleared up right now. So um, uh, up to Alderman Tempest right now, if either he wants to no, I'm not continue with this. I'm not he will not hold it over. Right. Uh, Alderman Rivera is asked to call the question. I will call the question. It's uh, a win-win for everybody. Well, hold on, just one, Alderman Rivera, if I could with beg your indulgence, I believe that Alderman Con Conkin may have wanted to right. ask a question. Uh, did Let's you want to ask Tom? I just had one question. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. But I, the question I have is, you know, you're, you made the statement that they're going to train Waukegan people and give them job skills. How do we guarantee Waukegan people get those jobs? I, from my understanding, this was going to be a class that was offered by CLC. So it sounds like you have to have an interest in the class and pay for the class to get the instruction to do this. No, no. Am I wrong? There's okay. no cost. No, no. We, no. Alderman, if I might respond to that, we, do, we, we insisted that they put in that they're going to be a, a providing associate employment and job training during site clearance phase to Waukegan residents, 
okay. and CLC personnel. We're very, I just uh, addressed that concern. We want our own people to learn these skills as well as students of the college well, who may not live. Yes. And by the way, many of the, of the young people that go to CLC are from Waukegan. Oh, so that's a, double, that's a double bonus for us right there. Well, you, you know, Mayor, you started, would it be like YCC and Youth Bill? Would that be part of this? Similar. Okay. I don't know that that organization itself would be part of it, but it would be the similar approach to a, a learning environment. Okay. So Tony? You maybe, know, Tony? Maybe some of our graduates. <laughs> some <laughs> of the graduates, that's okay. right. Well, I think that the... Can I make the, a closing comment? I'm okay, Alderman. And then we have the question called. Okay. okay. Uh, I just want a conclusion. I thought we could have got a little better deal. I am not against Lake County at that site. No way. I'm po it's a positive improvement. I just think if you're going for that kind of money, they could have bit the whole apple. That, that's my concern. And I don't know how it got, I wasn't part of the negotiations, wasn't informed of the negotiations, so I really don't know. But I felt we could have got a better deal, and I, I'm sorry. Your father called me Scotty, and he <laughs> did it for a reason. Okay. So with that, thank you for letting me close. Thank you, Alderman. At that point, we have called the question. Uh, we'll take the. Did we have the original? Do we yeah, have a motion? motion, motion, motion yeah. Okay. Roll call, please. Alderman Tempest. I'm going to have to vote no because I think we could have gotten them to pay for the whole de demolition. Alderman Larson. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. I think the college downtown would be a great asset if, it, if everything works out well. Alderman Moisio. Aye. I've made my comments. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. And Alderman Tempest, we do appreciate your comments. Well, Thank you. I'm, I'm I know that's all part and part of the fabric well, of getting I, this work I, done. I'm competitive and I... Yeah, understood. Item, uh, item E, um, uh, authorization to sell $1 properties to local not-for-profit housing groups at cost. Take a motion by Alderman Cunningham, seconded by Alderman Moisio. If, we'll, if I may speak to that question? Uh, yes, Alderman Tempest. Here I go again. Gosh. You know, I like when they come individually to the body. Who would, who? Because we can individually see the piece of property, what they intend to do with it. The example yeah. the other day of uh, the, they wanted to put a home over there and who else applied for it. And then I did a little further research with group homes, and I'll tell you the technique they use, Mayor, and I came from a, a good source that works on them. They'll put Waukegan people in the, for the first round, and then they'll import them from other communities and put them here because they want to get them away from their home environment. And here you are stuck in the school system, everything else, with somebody else's headaches. And headaches, let's be honest, they're, they're kids that are in need. And yes, they need need, but that's what happened. A lot of these homes for a dollar, I can understand, of veterans, people with 80% of salaries, sell it to them. Uh, the vet idea, you know, yes, I can understand that, but I think we need each to really look at each individual piece of property that we're going to sell for a dollar and not just have a blanket statement like the motion is before us. I agree with that. So I'd, with that, I'd like to hold that, that over. Uh, did, do you have any question? You know, maybe possibly Ezell might like to be able to address any specific questions. Okay, Ezell, would you mind coming up for a moment just in that case? That was that memo he gave us. I read that, but it was. Is it 222? Here. This is not for 222, though. No, yeah, he gave it. Ezell, no. How many one dollar properties are we talking about? Ezell, come on up for a moment. How many are we talking about? Oh, Welcome to the uh, firing gallery here. Sorry. But um, oh, don't be shy. He's not. Would you like to explain to the alderman exactly what's at work here? Um, what this has really nothing to do with uh, any particular property. Uh, what's happening is that we have an agreement with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, to turn over 15 properties to them okay. because of another agreement. And I think we all understand that. Uh, but in the meantime, Habitat is under no obligation to purchase each dollar property that becomes available. Well, our position is, is that it's, it's, it's really time sensitive. We don't have the luxury of time to take them and say, okay, are you interested in this property before we actually move on it? So when we get the notification that the property is available, we kind of we kind of have to move on it. Uh, actually, uh, B and is it um, E and F? E and F are really a part. They're actually the same thing. 
Uh, they are just suggestions as to ways to dispose of some of these properties that sit there while Keegan doesn't get stuck with them and all the maintenance and liability that go along with them. Um, so that's, that's really what this is about. As it stands right now, uh, we have maybe two properties that we might dispose of using this method uh, going forward if we purchase more and we are stuck with them. I, so it's, it's kind of, I mean, if we're doing this one by one, I don't really know how we approach that. Uh, Alderman Larson first, please. Uh, Azell, well, you were before Judiciary last week to right. talk about this. He produced a memo outlining a couple of the options. Um, I, I looked at uh, similar programs. Schaumburg offers the same program for some of their properties. And I'm sure the 80% uh, of the family medium is pretty much standard in, in a lot of towns. Am I correct? Well, it is, it, it is Autumn. Uh, what's, what's happening with that is we have uh, obviously different levels of income. A person who is at 120% of medium family income, now this is of course kind of piggybacking on a housing program that we're actually doing the neighborhood stable, stabilization program. Uh, so a person at 120% can participate in that program. Well, at the same time, you're talking about houses that are obviously going to cost more money. Mm -hmm. So we have nothing available for people of lower income, mm -hmm. which actually could afford to purchase a home if the price on the property is right. Well, uh, last meeting, we had a person from Chicago that was looking at developing a group home, and I think it was pretty much unanimous that we weren't eager to offer that up. Uh, based on Waukegan providing, you know, the one dollar program. Individuals versus an entity that is looking for a group home. We can control that individuals are buying this rather than a group home or an entity representing a group home, correct? We can control uh, a property that we purchase for a dollar, uh, spend rehab dollars in it, and then put it on the market for sale. Uh, a property that we sell to a not-for-profit housing organization, like Habitat, for mm -hmm. instance, we, we, we can stipulate that they have to okay. build an affordable unit or uh, provide an affordable unit on that property. So we so can we, stipulate we that a group home with uh, 10 or 12 individuals, which there are those types of fa uh, facilities in towns all over the country, we can stipulate that we would not allow that through this program correct? That we would not allow the group home to purchase a, $1. well, it's not really a group home. Yeah, we can. Okay, first of all, that's it. Right. But it, it's, not a, it's not a group. See, we cannot take these properties that we are purchasing for a dollar and then turn around and sell it to an individual. It would require uh, council approval to allow that kind of facility to open up right. additional that, facilities. Okay, I just want to make that clear. Right. Right. Thank you, Alderman. Your Lewis. Honor, uh, that, yes, Alderman. Uh, just Figueroa. to answer the Alderman, that would require a conditional use, use permit because right. it is in a, is a residential area. Get that on the uh, we're yeah. talking about specifically 222 South Park. Right. Then we're talking about a specific property, but then on the other hand, see, we kind of got, I guess, both of these tied together, and they really aren't tied together. Well, uh, it's I a think big difference for that a single-family home that's going to go on to the tax rolls versus. Now, I'm not against the group home, but a 501. But I think it's it's there's a real need for it. But we need a conditional use permit to go through the hearing process on that. Well, you know that's a decision that council will make, uh, just as it is with this decision. Uh, last report I got, we had 1,100 and I believe they told me 39 vacant homes in the city of Waukegan, uh, which at least 80 percent of those are, are foreclosed properties, uh, going from you know properties that are held in inventory by Hood properties that are held in inventory by, uh, by uh, Fannie Mae, uh, by some, some just individual institutions. So I guess, you know, if we are comfortable with as many vacant homes as we can have in the city of Waukegan, then we can kind of do nothing. If we want to address that issue, then I think we, we are probably going to need some innovative ways. And we're not giving up control. I mean, any property in the city of Waukegan uh, particularly once it becomes property of the city of Waukegan, uh, council and the city control the properties. Yeah, if, I, if I just real quick, if I could, you know, one thing too that comes to mind, these are not going to become rental property. 
These no, are ownership. Not. This is and a, the, right. the folks who buy these homes and end up owning them have to go to classes. They have to be up. They have to have an income. This is not something where we are talking purely subsidized housing, moving in, into neighborhoods. Uh, and I will say that. Um, you know, my experience on the county dealing with this and what we've accomplished so far since I've been in the office, I think, have been pretty good. Uh, we have helped yeah. with this neighborhood stabilization. We've got families into homes that we're not above their means. Right. These are not the same types of loans that we're all used to, the subprime mortgages, all of this. This is a whole different situation. These are going homes to people that have to have jobs, that have families, that provide stability for them. And I think it's a real positive for the community to have that type of home occupied, whereas you know, given the return of the, of the market is going to take several years, those homes aren't going to be the first ones to go. Or if they do go, they'll be bought by people in the end who may end up renting them. I was about to say what will ultimately happen is that you'll have a lot of investors buying these properties. And so we're going to have, you know, we talk about how much uh, subsidized housing we have in the city as it is. Uh, we could easily end up with even more. Um, so this, this is just what we're up against as far as the housing market is concerned. And Thank you. Uh, Corporation Council would like to add something here as well. Yes, Azell, um, I think that the council has expressed some reservation about uh, item E uh, with, with regard to just a blanket authorization uh, for selling uh, one dollar properties to nonprofit housing groups. Yes. Let me could I ask you this would That's it would it uh, uh, cramp your style uh, uh, impact your program if this item E were to be amended to say uh, at the end subject to parcel by parcel council approval would that be a problem for you? Well, even to say that we are going to do uh, sell them for a dollar, each one still has to come before council for. So you wouldn't mind, that could be added to this. Uh, it is. We, we, they would be on any way, but I'm just saying you would not mind an amendment to that effect. Just it's to not just carte blanche. It's not just carte blanche to just go out and you know sell well, properties for a dollar. We're talking about first of all not-for-profit housing development agencies that they have to be, and these properties have to be okay. affordable housing. So, so what you're saying is that it doesn't say that. No. I Maybe I could, if I could say this, there is a term known as CHODO, Community Housing Development Organization. organization right. Why don't we ask for an amendment to this that will add the term CHODO to this so that we can make the aldermen feel more comfortable about the fact. See, what I think is happening is they're seeing the words local not-for-profit and assuming right from that 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 means it will go into um, a halfway home of some sort or whatever as the alderman discussed that he's concerned about. Or uh, not the tax rolls. Or, well, if it's a chodo and it's, and it's then repaired and brought up to spec and sold to somebody, that is where item Item F comes into play is the is the uh, income range for that correct? Um, I'm a little confused, but what they if they want to uh, stipulate uh, that the housing organization has to be a shuttle, I have no problem with that. That will not pr that first of all, what we have to make sure of that it doesn't violate any HUD regulations. What we're doing right now. No, there's no violation. Okay, there. why don't we do this then? If if I might ask. Uh, Alderman, you want to hold it over? Instead of trying to do it in the council floor at night, get the be back together with our corporation council. The way it was worded on our thing here today, very confusing to the alderman. Well, then we and can add the, the chodo to it. And uh, yeah, but let's, let's do it the right sure. way and get it before us properly. I know what Ezell is trying to do. You do a good job, Ezell. But the way this is worded on the thing, to sell product for nonprofit, it's so it's it just confusing. That's understood. Well, then why don't we do we this, hold, if, if, if you would, since E and F are sort of inexorably intertwined, would it I make could, sense to hold them both over? Your, if I could, Your Honor, uh, Please. the memo uh, that yes. Alderman Lawson mentioned that I gave last week actually stipulated that these two efforts were not one or the other. It's just an option, an opportunity to dispose of the properties and to make sure that we dispose of them in a way that's going to be uh, productive for the city. Uh, if, they, if, if council wants to hold it over, I really have no problem with it, y'all. So, uh, go ahead, Alderman. So you're saying that um, 
there's more than just one property. We have several prop dollar properties that are waiting to be at this turned moment, over. At this moment, we have two properties that we acquired for a dollar, and actually one that we are kind of working through some legal things to get into, into our possession uh, that Habitat did not take an interest in. We transferred five properties to Habitat. So Habitat does not want these two? They do not want these two. So you want to get these into a um, single family? Well, they would continue to be single family homes. They are single family homes. But why uh, is not for profit in here? What, what, well, well, because of, because a housing a housing development corporation like Habitat okay, uh, could actually okay. take this house, uh, we, and they have then they take responsibility for the rehabilitation. Uh, for the disposition and this whole thing. Okay, so we're out of it, like he was saying about the new sun building, we're out of it. Okay, so these two homes, they have to be turned over to a not-for-profit. Is that because of HUD or what? No, that is not mandatory. We could actually rehab them and attempt to sell them ourselves, uh, but I don't, I would not We're not in that business, that. and we're not getting I, in that I business. Would not, I don't no, think I would any alderman up here that. wants to see that. Um, so why reinvent the wheel? You have professionals out there that have a long history of this type of service. Right, this, this is what they do, right. you know, housing development. So this is going to be held over, uh, and I think that if I might, uh, Alderman Tempest, uh, we're going to move on to F, and I think that you should just request that be held may over I, as well. May I please? Uh, yeah, that will be held over as well per Alderman Tempest's request. Now we move to item G. Um, I'd like to read this first, uh, if I could. Um, we're uh, requesting a motion to approve temporary use of the city lot at the southwest corner of Sheridan Road and Belvedere Street for a Greentown Waukegan Community Garden to be known as Lakeview Gardens, which was, uh, that was property that we purchased using bond funding, so it has to be for a public purpose. The goal was to allow uh, the Greentown organization to be able to work with our local schools to be able to turn that into a community garden. I believe that Corporation Council um, has some a small bit of language you would like to see added to it, so we would have to request for uh, an amendment if we could, but Alder, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Corporation Council, if you could please move forward with yes. your language. I apologize, uh, I, the word conceptual should have been added to this and approve uh, conceptual temporary use. The reason I say that is the Greentown Walking Committee, which includes people like uh, Russ Tomlin, Tom Haggerty, uh, Ron Laubach, city officials, and some gardening and urban uh, agriculture experts from the community, uh, only has the power to come before this council and make suggestions, recommendations. Uh, we obviously uh, will not spend one nickel of city money without the approval of this council. So all, all the Greentown Waukegan Committee does is bring to the council plans, possibilities. Right now, um, what we'd like to do, we, we've begun to think through what might be done with this lot, whether it's native plants, whether it's uh, some locally grown food, uh, a mixed use. Uh, we're looking at schools doing some seedlings for us. Uh, we're looking at a variety of things. We're not ready to bring a plan to this council yet <laughs> as to exactly how this would go. We are also looking to fund this thing virtually entirely through volunteers and organizations so the city and its financial posture is not going to have to expend dollars on this, uh, certainly beyond um, maybe some very basic minimal things that we might ask of you. But right now, all, all I, I would ask is that we have an amendment to add the word conceptual to item G. And then the Greentown Walking Committee can go ahead and, and begin to put together a detailed plan to come back to the council with for your consideration. The word conceptual would fit into, at, if you could just read uh, the point you'd like to see that. Uh, conceptually approve the temporary use of the city lot would be the way I would ask, ask it to be. So that we, we don't have any approval of actual action, but a, an approval for us to bring to you a plan. Okay, uh, I'll take a motion by Alderman Rivera, seconded by Alderman Moisio to um, First amend. to to uh, amend item G to add the word conceptually. Right. Um, I think we can just do a voice vote. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The, Ayes have it. Thank the, you. The, now Honor, we will no. vote on. I, I'm Your sorry, uh, Alderman. Just one moment, no. if I could. I'll restate yeah. Yeah. item G. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you, Your Honor, you to need to on the amendment. Yes. It shouldn't be southwest corner. You should put an address of 111 and 113 
southwest corner of Belvedere is not that at, is not 111 Bel uh, Belvedere. I'm sorry, I don't have that on my agenda. I know you don't. It, it says on the southwest corner, southwest corner of Sheridan Road in Belvedere. Right. Well, it's not Sheridan Road. Genesee. South Genesee. It is a Sheridan. Sheridan. South Genesee swings out ahead of time, and Sheridan, I believe it is. We're talking about the Beatty parcel. The I know. Old, uh, yeah. car but that's not the southwest corner. I believe it's that's southwest corner. It's the southwest that's, that's corner. southeast corner. It, it goes so all the way to Genesee. So it'd be the southeast, southeast corner of Thank Genesee, you. but it's the southwest corner of Sheridan Road. Right. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. 111. Can we live with as described on the 111? Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, we have the amend as amended. We need to approve as amended item G. Again, take the uh, motion by Alderman Rivera, seconded by Alderman Moisio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, we go to item 11 ordinances and resolutions. I believe this comes out of Judiciary Committee, Alderman Figueroa. Is that correct? Well, right. this was this was held over for some time, and a copy is in your um, uh, was provided to your packets. This is the Martin subdivision. Uh, this was approved some time ago, yeah. and it was a question that Alderman Tempest had for which it was held over, and that was to include sidewalks and curbs. And we've got that included now. I don't see it in, in the vote. I don't see it. I read all this. You know what? Is that it? No, it's just on there. Oh, okay. <coughs> Let me see. That's this the is it. Really. That's the final plan. Is Steve here? No. No, he is. You're right. This is it's the, the final, final plan. plan. We need an actual agreement. Not there. I haven't seen Not there. for that. So, um, no. 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 It's. Well, pending the fact that we don't have an actual agreement before us, then we will hold this over again. Um, now, I will say uh, that uh, we will do Alderman's time, and as I said before, we were going to executive session following, pardon? Uh, be held over by Alderman Tempest. <laughs> Just automatically. Um, okay, now we go to Alderman's time, uh, Mr. Clerk. Alderman Tempest. All the time? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, good. I'll start right out on with the subdivision if I can. Uh, why? I read this very carefully. I come. I read everything. There. And in committee, we had our developer who wanted to put this development in without curbs and gutters. I had concerns of that. I went out there. I know the property. You tried to put it through once years ago, and I went out and checked. I went out and checked again. The subdivisions to the south and west have curb and gutters. You, and, you know, I know it's rural, but you know, you ought to have city standards. And also, I have questions on the map. If you looked at the map, I know it's held over, but I'm doing it during all of the time. Well, I, I'm the one road ain't going to be developed. They're going to put, and it's we ought to know exactly what you gentlemen are voting on. You need to know exactly. And if you look at the map that he gave you in Cheyenne, it shows it's a half a street. Is that what we agreed for? A half a street? We vacated a parcel of land. And I gave him two extra lots. I gave him a little more money to make the subdivision work. Uh, okay, that's, so that's why we held it over. That needs to be ironed out. Uh, Alderman time. Uh, boy, on the budget. I wasn't here for the last one, but uh, I was taking care of my daughter with hip surgery, so I missed our meetings. Otherwise, I don't miss. But I did watch it on TV last night, so I felt uh, just keep working. I thought Tina did a good job on the TV explaining things, and uh, I listened to the meeting on TV, so I got a good idea of what took place. Uh, tax increases. I'm getting a lot of phone calls on tax increases. People are concerned. But I, I want to bring a little history to date, Mayor. You know, they say the city hasn't done this and that. Uh, the city of Waukegan has kept a pretty level tax base throughout the years. Pretty level. And we got caught in economic downturn. The College of Lake County got a tax increase. The Fort Reserve, 
got a tax increase. The school district, back a few years ago, got a big tax increase. Go back to your back tax bills about six years ago. You see what I'm talking about. They passed a referendum, they pushed it. The park district got a tremendous increase in their taxes they received from you. Go back uh, seven, eight years and see what you're paying to the park district. Waukegan has been pretty steady on what we've been paying out. Pretty steady. We had a tax rate at one time about a dollar sixty cents for quite a few years, and then I told you Jim Edgar put a rule in you couldn't go over five percent without a special hearing, so the tax rate eventually went down, 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 and it leveled off. I have a graph that just recently spiked up because we didn't abate the bonds. Uh, we're going to have to continue to find ways to make the city work with less money. That's one of the reasons I questioned the captains on the uh, on the fire department. I don't know if we need four captains. You got three guys there, and I got to have one to fill in when they're on vacation. Well, hell, two ought to be able to fill in vacation. I could make the schedule out for you if I had to. Uh, you know, we're going to have to we're going to get together and wait. And I don't want to hurt anybody. When a guy retires, maybe that's the time to reduce one. You know, uh, but we can't. We can't continue playing the same game we have before. And it's not one alderman's fault here. It's not the mayor's fault. It's the economic times that we're in. It, it really is. And we're just going to have to work harder in ways that we get more work out of the employees we have. And I feel sorry for a lot of this. We have some employees that have not had a raise for what? Sam, how many three years? Three years? They have not had a raise? Not only that, they take a furlough day with no pay, and they're paying 10% of their insurance costs, which they never paid before. So they have taken a pay cut. The alderman up here decided, yeah, we didn't, in, we didn't take a raise this year, and we voted for a four year, the next four years, no increase. I mean, we all got to work together to try, and the community's got to maybe start thinking about it's a dead squirrel out in front of your yard. For God's sake, don't call the animal warden to come pick it up. Go out there with a shovel and pick it up and put it in a garbage can, you know? Start doing a little more for yourself. We've got to all work together to make things go. And again, my vote on the CLC tonight, I was not voting against CLC. I was voting to get a better deal. <laughs> and I think we could have got a little better deal. That's my nature. Okay, thank you very much, Your Honor. Alderman Larson. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Tempest al alluded to the public in the last two weeks, a number of the taxing districts have uh, published their levy increases. I have in the 8th Ward, it encompasses quite an area from east to west, and I have six school districts wow. that partially in the 8th Ward. Jeez. From Warren High School to Gurney Grade to uh, uh, Spalding to uh, Zion to uh, Beach Park to Waukegan, six school districts. Each one of them published a levy in the double digits, a de levy increase. They probably won't, you know, get there, but the ones out on the west side, the Gurney schools, 13, 16 percent increases in their proposed levy. When you look at the tax bills carefully, and this has gone on for years again, we've talked about it till we're blue in the face and people just don't get it. Your Waukegan portion of your tax bill has been 16, 17 cents out of every dollar for years. We've tried to maintain it on a level basis as Alderman Tempest very correctly indicated. 70% of your tax bill typically, doesn't matter what school district you're in, goes towards the schools. We have no responsibility as this body to, you know, uh, we don't have any responsibility in setting their uh, tax rate. Park district, county, township, they, they take up about the remaining 15%. So, well, people are angry, they're frightened. They don't want to lose their homes, they're hanging on, they're not getting their Social Security increase. 
We totally understand that. We're all in the same boat economically, our families, many of us. But I want to mention again that the largest proportion of your tax bill is something that the city council has no control over, and that's, and that's been that way for decades, not just a few years. Um, on a brighter note, I want to once again thank all the many volunteers uh, for Waukegan Main Street and the city of Waukegan and just people who pitched in to help make the holiday fest the success it was. We had a white event, which was nice. Uh, a little slushy at times, but we took care of that too. Um, I think there was something in the neighborhood of 170 s'mores that were uh, that were that were eaten by the kids. Hmm. So thanks to the volunteers who stood over that fire and helped the kids make a, a wonderful, healthy treat. <laughs> it was great to see. And it's not too early to mark on your calendars the date March 5th. Waukegan Main Street hosts or is going to have a heck of a party again this year, the Mardi Gras party, March 5th. So put it on your calendars, get your uh, reservations and your uh, feathered boas ready because it's going to be another good party. Thank you very much. Alden Rivera. Uh, thank you. Uh, I too have been uh, getting a lot of calls. Uh, as you know in my district, you know, I have what, uh, three townships, uh, Libertyville, Waukegan, Warren Township, and uh, again, I mean, they're taxed to death. And I know you've mentioned uh, Alderman uh, Larson, you meant, and also Alderman uh, uh, Tempest mentioned that how we have had kept our, our portions at a certain level for many years. Well, guess what? That hurt us. That hurt us bad. Instead of doing it gradually, little by little, now we're asking the taxpayers to, tr to see if we can uh, close this gap all in one, with one swipe. And to me, that's, that's, that's not right. Yeah, well, it's nice to uh, stand up here and say, yeah, we kept the taxes down for, for many years, but I think that uh, in the long run has hurt us. So I have, uh, like I said, it's very, I'm encouraging everyone to be here on the 14th tax talk. And I hope everyone comes to that because it's very important that they're, they come to this uh, so they can really hear, uh, first of all, for us aldermen to listen, to hear what they have to say, but at the same time to get an education on what's going on as well. And I believe there's going to be other people here uh, from uh, the uh, county uh, uh, tax assessor's office uh, to, to explain some of the programs that may be out there. So there's going to be some good things as well. But I encourage everyone to be here for that on the 14th. And not only that, I believe we have our council meeting on the 20th. Uh, we also have a, uh, uh, a truth and taxation hearing before, that, uh, before our council meeting. So it's important that you're here for that. But once again, uh, again, I mean, these are big decisions that we have to make. Uh, that's why uh, the people elected us to be here to, to do these things, but, but at the same time, we want people to understand that we care as well. I'm a taxpayer. Right now, I'm talking to you as a taxpayer as well, because I'm very concerned. Because we have a lot of families, uh, the senior citizens, you know, they're on certain income. You know, to ask them now to possibly play, pay double digits in their property taxes, in, in this time, that's insane. It's going to be, it's tough, but I want them to make sure that they're here, to voice their opinion, and to listen to what's out there in terms of programs. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Tom. Public Works did a, a great job with the, uh, our first snow removal. Uh, very good job. Roads are nice, like always. So I appreciate that very much. Also, I, I too went to the uh, holiday events uh, downtown, and I enjoyed it. Stopped in some of the businesses, and uh, I congratulate the Waukegan Main Street for doing a wonderful job, like they always do. Thank you very much. 
Alderman Cunningham. Uh, th uh, thank you. Uh, Your Honor, uh, two things I have. One, uh, on tonight's meeting on item G, uh, I, I understand there is a, we're trying to create a greener uh, environment, but in the future, uh, I'm expecting for the alderman uh, of the wards to be informed about this prior to council meeting. You know, this is the first time uh, I, I've heard about it, but uh, never knew this was going to be on the agenda. And uh, as this committee that you're, that has been put together by city officials, uh, it would have been nice for particularly this alderman t uh, to be informed that this was going in his ward. So uh, that's what that would have been nice, but uh, don't want to take away from the, the positive side of it, but there are some things that, um, that I think we should be a little bit more informed of when it comes to things that are going on in our wards because on, from a front line standpoint, when people ask questions, they don't call other, they call the alderman or particularly the mayor's office. So that's just uh, you know, uh, food for thought for the future. Second, uh, don't know if it, many people have received this type of notice, but this notice went out to a couple of my, the residents in, in my ward, and it says a notice to Lake County residents. In recent review of your services, your service area, we were, uh, we have noticed that your property does not have water service line coverage from home service. You are responsible for the maintenance and repair of exterior water lines at the above address. Repair, repairing a broken line could cost you thousands of dollars without coverage. This is going out to residents in the city of Waukegan. Yeah. And this appears that it's coming to Waukegan. This is coming from the city of Waukegan. Uh, after talking to uh, Jeff Mazinski, first of all, I got a call from two or three, and it seems like they're targeting uh, our seniors. It, it seems like it's targeting our seniors. So what I, uh, I'm hoping to do, Dan, I'm gonna give you a copy of this, and if you can probably send a, get a notice out regarding this, but um, um, I did talk with Jeff. Jeff said he's heard about it, but not that not to, uh, it was nothing coming from us. It has nothing to do, but the, the way this notice reads, it reads like it's something that to do with the city of Waukegan. Tom, I, I'll get you a copy so you have for your, your file, but. Sam, will, will you get me a copy too? Yeah. We, because I have not seen this the first I've I heard of this same. too. Yeah, at, and uh, I've heard it going in, I know the first war, I think the fifth war, now Mosio. So we want to be extremely careful with this. And I, I even had one resident who was about to send it in thinking that it's something they had to pay from the city. And let me just say what it's costing them. It's costing them, I think 13, 14, here it is, 4.99 per month, 14.97 per month, per quarter, or 59.98 per year. You know, bottom line is, uh, I ain't gonna say the word scam, but I guess I did say it, didn't I? So we just wanna be extremely careful to let our residents know this is not something from the city of Waukegan. Uh, uh, you know, you want to be very careful about this, and I don't even know how to how to position it, but we, I want to make sure it got out today. Please, please be careful, and if not, at least they call their alderman. I'm happy about that. Uh, if you have any any questions, just feel free to call City Hall. But this is not coming from the city, Cor correct, Tom? No, no, not coming from the city of Waukegan at all. Last but not least, obviously the first snowstorm. Uh, we we got spoiled in November. I just I, I will admit it because I know I did. When you have 40 to 50 degree weather in November up in near the lake, then you should be happy. But December 1st came in with a bang, didn't it? And, and with that being said, uh, the snow, the first snowfall. I think the residents did a pretty good job. What I will ask though uh, is our. Uh, Patrol division from the police department. There are some. Uh, it seems like there's s some cars who have not been moved yet. I think the best time to you know to, to send a note for you know all of December, January, and February is start putting some tickets on them cars that still has snow on it, that hasn't been moved in X amount of time. And I, I'm going to ask. This might be directed to Tom. Tom, will this help? It was a suggestion from one of the residents. I, I know on some of our one-way streets, they park on one side and they just forget to move their cars. Would it be possible 
uh, if we can have them, is it alternate park doing snow times so you can just knock it out one time and knock it out another time? Is that something you, you, you're, you would like to happen or you'd be thinking about? Okay, it was a suggestion from one of the residents, and I want to throw it out there. It sounds good to me. I, I just want to get it up because I know it's it, it. You know, for the life of me, why would you just let a car sit there? It just it always happens. But Chicago does it well, don't they? They tell them you you're going to get told. They what is it? An ordinance that starts on a certain time of the year and ends on a certain time of the year. They just tow your car, don't they? December first. We don't want to do that. So that's a very sensitive subject to us in Waukegan now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Conkin. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to echo the thoughts of Alderman Larson, Alderman Rivera about the taxes. Uh, this is something that's obviously a very important to everybody here in the city. I've gotten a number of calls from people that <coughs> on fixed incomes and very concerned about whether or not they'd be able to make the tax rate. and. <coughs> Just want to emphasize exactly what Oliver and Larson said. There's a lot of things on your tax bill that we do not control. Um, that's something that I think everybody should do. And if we come in and, like Alderman Rivera said, to come in here to that tax talk and find out and actually look at your bill and actually determine where your money's going. And any increase that this council votes on is not on your entire tax bill, just one portion of it. As for city areas along with Alderman Cunningham, yeah, we had a heck of a November. I think we had a heck of a December so far, too, because if it had snowed any more and you'd have plowed in any more driveways, I don't think yet the people would be as happy as they are anyways. But, Tom, I think your city yards group did an excellent job. And the only other comment I got is uh, with the upcoming Christmas and New Year's, uh, with little snow on the ground, I'd please everybody just be careful out there. We don't want to see anybody, kids walking to school that through sidewalks that might not be shoveled, areas around the school, especially kids might be walking the street. That's something that, uh, especially with the snow on the ground, take particular care when driving. Uh, let's just be safe for the rest of the year and especially through the Christmas, New Year, holiday season. That's all, thank you. Alderman Morgeau? Yeah, taxes, taxes, taxes. Obviously, if you've paid attention, it's not just a subject in Waukegan, but it's a subject all over the country. People are tired of being taxed. But then it becomes, if we don't tax, we can't offer the same services. You can only ask your employees to work so hard for the amount of money before they say, I'm just, you know, I'm just not going to do it. I only do so much, they won't do the little extra things. Have we gotten ourselves in this problem? Maybe a little bit. But we're only an ancillary government of the state. Part of that rests on the state. Part of our problem is our pensions. And it's not fair to guys who have retired, who gave their life to Waukegan, and especially police and firemen, policemen who every decision they make is a potential lawsuit to, to, to change in the middle of the stream for them either. The system is flawed. It's flawed from the beginning, is we have to make a pension payment to the pension, the police pension and the fire pension, they say, here's the bill, here's what you have to pay. Whether they lost money on investments or not, the taxpayers of, the, of Waukegan have to pick that up. It's not a statewide system. That's not fair to the retirees, it's not fair to the taxpayers, it's not fair to anybody up here. It's a flawed system. It needs to be fixed, and it, it needs to be fixed now. But nobody up here can fix that. Only people in Springfield can fix that. In some conversations with Tina, she brought up an interesting point. You know, the federal government, GM, was, GM folded. ING, the insurance company, folded. The banks got in trouble. The federal government said, we can't let these people fail. Meanwhile, you have all these municipalities and these states that are failing. My solution is here. State of Illinois, there's the, tick, the, the, uh, the, tick, uh, the, the keys to City Hall. You can have it. It's yours, state, come in and take it over. You can have it. What do you think they're gonna do? Oh, no, no, that's okay, that's okay. We don't want that. But then you make the rules that we gotta play by. How can you let us play by these rules when we, we can't do anything about it? 
We can't play by these rules. You cannot keep going back to the taxpayer, asking them to make up shortfalls that were bad investments. You can't do it. Just like that quote that I read at the last council meeting, a, a, a government monopoly is the worst type. It only serves itself. It only serves itself. We need reform at the state and federal government level to help us out. We can keep limping along and keep going back to the taxpayer, but the taxpayers I've talked to and the taxpayers that have called me, they said, I've had enough. Quit taxing me. And at the end of the day, and I understand what Alderman Larson has said and what Sam has said, we're only getting 17%. Look at your tax bill. There's about 10 taxing bodies on it. They don't want to hear that. They don't understand that. We can have a tax talk, and some of them will understand, but at the end of the day, they're still getting taxed more. I just wrote a $900 check to my mortgage company because the escrow was short. I don't want to have to do that again. I don't have $900 to write them again. Alderman Tempest brings up a good point. We've got to start doing more for ourselves. That's part of the reason we're in this problem is we have so many irresponsible people that the responsible people have to try to take care of. What do you do? It can't just be fixed up here. But part of, my, part of me says is we need to push at Springfield and push to Washington where they can make real change. We can only change so much up here. We can only change the rules so much. We can only ask our employees to work so hard for the same amount of money before they say, hey, I'm finished with that. We need to push back to higher government to help us fix some of our problems. Some of our problems are our own. Some of their problems, we need to help them, or we need to push at them so they can help us or we'll fall apart. What if every municipality in the state of Illinois did that? You'd get some real reform, you'd get some real change from Springfield and from Washington if all the municipalities did. I watched a pension reform thing. Mayor, you told me we're part of that, trying to get this reform because it's gonna, it's gonna bankrupt us. And that's not fair, again, to the retirees, it's not fair to the taxpayer, it's not fair to us. It needs to be fixed and it needs to be fixed now. We need to push harder and if it comes to it, I'll give them the keys. They can have it. Thank you. Alderman Figueroa. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. I want to make an announcement that uh, judiciary meeting, that's two weeks, that's right before the, the uh, city council meeting. I have an item coming out of development commission that's very important and uh, wait for it to come out. I have a quick judiciary committee meeting on the 20th uh, for 15 minutes and it has to do with the rewrite of one of the um, one of our zoning codes see how it goes but it has to do with a piece of property so that uh, we can get pardon me truth and taxation two weeks uh yeah it's i'll, I'll address uh, with each of the aldermen once it comes out of development commission so that everybody but judiciary uh, once everybody's read it uh, it's a simple but it has to be done. Um, 545? 545? Wait a minute, 545? Okay, well, the truth in taxation, will it be a full council? Six, six o'clock. Six o'clock or 630? 630 is game Tina? Six. Six. Six o'clock is different. Six o'clock. Oh, okay. Oh, there's a hearing at six. Six o'clock. Okay. Okay. Judiciary at five forty-five. Then. What is that? That's the judiciary on, uh, on in two weeks. Five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. I put on up. But I was going to do the homework first of all to make sure okay. everybody. I've talked to everybody. Okay. Five thirty. It is then. Okay. All right. And. Um, I just wanted to commend the mayor on um, on this program for manufacturing uh, industrial uh, group getting together. And it's a subject that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, having spent 30, 30 plus years working in industry, and um, seeing so many jobs being shipped overseas and, and 
hearing stories similar to what the mayor brought up about the machinist skills that are going unfilled. And for so many years working with the Workforce Investment Board, and I'm still on that, on that uh, and, and hearing similar stories about so many jobs going unfilled because we do not have the people properly trained to fill the jobs. And one of the coming crises, upcoming crises, and I hate to harp on this, is we have so many people, baby boomers, that are retiring and there's nobody to step into their, into their shoes. Now we talk about so many jobs that have shipped overseas, but we're not talking about the jobs that are here right now, the high tech jobs. And it's not going to take just the school district, CLC, it's going to take the community to get after young people to go ahead and fill those jobs. Um, so I, I commend you. I think that it's, it's, um, it's really needed, but I think it's going to take a community effort to uh, this commission. Um, I certainly hope that uh, and, and um, have the um, the, the hope that, uh, if, if you will, that this is going to be able to take root and uh, certainly light a fire under the, um, under the schools. Uh, we can't just lay it at the doorsteps of the schools. Uh, we got to help them. I have kids that are ready to, 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 to step into these jobs. So it's, uh, there's a lot there and uh, I, I commend the, the mayor for this commission and uh, uh, I look forward if 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 he chooses uh, uh, i'd I'd like to be on on that uh, commission. I think that there's a lot of insight having worked with industry as as simple as being able to fill to excuse me to read a manufacturing instruction and follow it to the letter. You'd be surprised how many people can't do that. Read an instruction and follow it step by step. Okay, uh, enough said. So, Alder Newsom. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments. One thing I do want to offer very quickly before I take the motion to go in executive session is that the state did pass uh, a form of pension reform. Um, we have downloaded that bill and are kind of working our way through it, but. It's not going to solve our current problem. That's There's the, 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 what we need is not in there, uh, it, particularly in the shortfall with the pension funds as they are right now. If those had occurred after a date next year, we'd be all set because you'd have four or five years to amortize that and, and to backfill it. But it's not set up like that now. Maybe, uh, maybe the voices will be heard down in Springfield and maybe we'll get some amendments to it. Yes, Alderman. We need a bailout. Well, we need a bailout. I I'm, think I'm, we're going to have to generate, that's, we're gonna have to generate our own bailout. So it's, uh, but it's something that um, as we analyze this and if we find there's any, any uh, silver among the dark clouds, we'll, we'll let you know. But uh, anyway, we'll take a motion to go into executive session for a settlement of claims and pending litigation by uh, uh, Alderman uh, Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Tempest. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We'll take a five-minute uh, recess before we go into executive session. Hey, Sonny, can I ask you a question? Yeah, one, two, three, four, and five. Motion to come back into regular session by Alderman Rivera, seconded by Alderman Conkin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn by Alderman Moisio, seconded by Alderman Larson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you.